Hello, and welcome to part two of my Godot pipeline add-on for Blender series. I've already done the first video, which explains what this add-on is all about. So if you haven't seen it already, feel free to go check it out. I'm going to put the link down below. So today I've got some more collision updates. I've made some improvements on the rigid and static bodies and how that whole workflow works. And we're going to do another example using this, this blue object here to show how we can do some cylindrical uh, collisions, as well as some more of these complex um, box rigid bodies, which we can integrate into the pipeline. So first things first, the updates on the add-on itself. What I've done is if you take one of these examples here, let's look at the orange object. I'm gonna just hide these other ones for clarity. Last video, I talked about how we construct these kind of more complex collisions from a base object. And if I hide my collisions here, you can see this is my base mesh, right? Um, it's got a material on it, this orange metallic-y material. Um, pretty simple mesh, but it has a few details on it, which we want to create some collisions around. Now, in the add-on, all we have to do for this parent mesh, I'm going to call it, um, is you come into collisions and you type body only. You select body only from the dropdown. And then when you press body only, we're going to hit set collision. Actually, I need this one to be a rigid body as well. And under the collision custom properties, you're going to see body only dash R. Now that pretty much takes care of everything. Um, when we go ahead and import this into Godot, you're going to see we don't need to do those um, additional reorganizing steps that I had in the last video. So I'm going to go ahead and export this right away just to show you what the new uh, pipeline looks like. Sometimes you need to save Blender in order to kick the import. I'm not really sure why. Um, but if we go ahead and drop this in, we hit make local, you're going to see this collision looks correct already. Um, we're going to do a quick run in the, in, the, uh, in the game here just to make sure that it looks good. But basically, I fixed some of the coding in the add-on, and now you don't need to do any additional steps. All those rigid bodies, they just come in um, automatically. So you can see we can run through the grooves here. All this looks good. Next up, I want to do another example um, using this cylinder over here. And what I need to do is hide the other one I was working on, and we're going to hide these other cubes. All right, so let's say you have this cylinder object. How are you going to make collisions work um, for this? Um, so the first thing we can do is we can take a look at the mesh. And if I go to wireframe, we can kind of see um, this inner cylinder is a pretty clean object that we can wrap a cylinder collision around. Um, so I didn't get to it in the first video, but you can actually create cylinder collisions with this add-on. It's not that hard. So we're going to duplicate that, separate by selection, and then we see we're going to have this separate. It's kind of ugly, but this mesh really doesn't matter because the mesh itself is not going to be imported into Godot. It's just we're going to do a let's do a collision only display wireframe and we're going to do a cylinder. So I'm going to set that collision. And I'm going to set the bounding box. I'm going to double check and make sure my scale is one. So it is set to one here. And then we can set collision sizes. So down here, we get the height and the radius of the cylinder, and that's all the engine really needs. Um, once this is parented to the main mesh, the engine is gonna bring it in with the correct location, and then it just generates the collision based on the radius and the height. Okay, so that's the first part. Um, the next part is these fins uh, type things. And obviously there are a bunch of rectangular prisms, so we can use box collisions for these. So if I select these, let me go to X-ray. Let's try that again. Select these. I'm going to duplicate and then separate by selection. So same process. Now, this piece is going to give us a bit of an issue, and I'm just going to hide the terrain for a second. Because the way that the box collision works is, first of all, it wants the origin to be at the center of the bounding box. But the way that blender calculates dimensions is based on the overall footprint of this object so if we come up here and look at item you're going to see it thinks in the x direction that we're 1.24 meters wide when you look at the grid here we're definitely less than one um, so to fix this it's kind of a bit of a hack but you just 
we're just going to rotate this and we're going to set this to uh, median point. We're going to rotate this and just try to get it right on the grid. So you can hold shift while you rotate to get it really, really, really close. Um, and because this is for collisions, that's probably good enough. And we're going to put it right on a grid line. And once you do this, if you just watch these dimensions, I'm going to go control A, apply rotation and scale. Now we can see the, you know, quote, real dimensions of this piece, which are 0 0.681, 5.7, and 11.8. Now what we want to do is we want to take this piece and we're going to apply a box collision. It's going to be collision only, display, display wireframe. And we're going to go ahead and set that. Uh, origin's already at bounding box, that should be fine. And then we set the collision sizes. So we see all the details are here. Now to get this back over here, we do have to play with it a little bit just to get it in the right spot um, to hit right on top of this. But I'll show you a technique for, um, for duplicating or repeating this. Let's say your 3D cursor is somewhere over here. Um, really what we wanna do for this collision is we wanna rotate it around and, and duplicate it um, for the cylinder. So what you can do is you can set cursor to active. So that'll put the 3D cursor right on that cylinder. Then when we duplicate this, we can rotate it around the 3D cursor. So I'm just gonna quickly do this. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect. This is just for collisions. I mean, you want it to be close, um, but yeah, this, this method will work and it's pretty, pretty quick. Okay, uh, I don't even think that took me a minute in total. Um, what we can do as well is if we notice there's some of these that are a little bit off, we can clean those up. You can hold shift and then rotate around that origin point, or sorry, that 3D cursor, just to clean up some of these, make sure these edges are really tight. And yeah, I mean, this is this is a method that should work pretty well. Even if you have an object that isn't perf these perfect shapes, you can use the box collisions and the cylinder collisions to your advantage to get some really efficient uh, physics collisions in engine. So that's just an organizational thing. We're, we've got all the collision objects in this uh, collisions folder, but really what the importer needs is we're gonna take all of these and parent them to the cylinder. So you select all of them at once, then you press control and hit the object you wanna parent to at the end, press control P object. And you're gonna see now we have this uh, parent structure. If we hit our main cylinder mesh, and drop it down, you'll see that all those collisions are underneath it. Okay, so with that done, all we have to do is I'm gonna bring back the, the floor. So we're gonna go level, terrain. Then we go through our normal export process. So once we're in engine here, I'm going to delete the old one. I'm just going to double check to make sure that file came in. So save Blender and you'll see that updates. Then we drop this right into our scene. We hit make local and you can see already this looks looks like it's going to work. All the collision shapes are there. You can see those faint blue lines. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. So once again, our, our static body is now uh, here in the scene, see if we can run into it. So this looks good. This looks to me like all of the collisions are working properly. And yeah, we were able to do that in Blender pretty quickly. So that's all I had this time. I hope this was helpful and I hope you can, uh, can use that add-on for your own workflow and your own games. Thanks for watching.